Hey guys, it's Jess, and I'm excited to be hopping along with Pear Blossom Press today through a blog hop. If you're interested in checking out the hop, you can definitely check the description down below, and I'll have all the details and a link to the blog post where you can start hopping, ready to go for you. So for this card, we're all, or for this hop, we're all making light up cards. And we're going to be using the Light Up uh, Power Pack Kit from Pear Blossom Press. So Pear Blossom Press is a pretty new company overall. Uh, and I do have to apologize if you guys can hear the jets going back and forth in the background. I've been trying to film or record this for like an hour now and it's not getting any better and I'm kind of in a time crunch. So bear with me. Sorry if you can hear that. <laughs> uh, anyhow, so Pear Blossom Press is a fairly new company uh, making light up cards easy. So previously, I never was willing to try a light up card because it just seemed too complicated and I wasn't having any of that. So I uh, just kind of shied away from it. I never was willing to take the plunge. And then when I saw the Power Pack kits that Pear Blossom Press had, I was like, sold. It's time for me to try it. So I did participate in one previous hop for Pear Blossom Press where I introduced the Power Pack kits on my YouTube channel, and it was a big success. I think it was a, a really popular thing. People were saying, you know, hey, this is really cool. I definitely want to try this now. So I thought it would be really cool to participate again and show you guys how it works. So for my card, I'm doing a nighttime scene because these seem to work perfectly for uh, light up cards. I'm doing some ink blending with Distress Oxides. Sorry I keep going off of the camera camera or out of the film, the range, out of the picture, whatever that's called. Um, out of frame, I think is what it's called. Uh, anyway, sorry that I keep moving out so you can't see me. I recently kind of adjusted things on my desk and I didn't realize that I would have to put things a little bit further in and so I'm a little lower than I normally would be. Uh, but I did my Distress Oxide blending and then I sprayed some of the water with the Distress Sprayer into my hand. I flicked the water onto my background and then now I'm watering down some acrylic paint and using the Distress Splatter Brush to create nighttime stars in the sky. I think this is such a cool technique and I've been using it a ton lately. So if you've been watching any of my videos, I'm sure you've seen this before. <laughs> uh, so now I'm using some Spectrum Noir Finesse Black Ink uh, to you. Uh, to put on some tree branches. Now, um, you'll notice that I have some colored images down there at the bottom for reference. I did decide to leave out the coloring from today's video because I wanted to keep the focus more on the power pack and less on the coloring and all of that. So I just figured it would end up being too long of a video if I tried to include that. Uh, so what I'm doing here is using the Hero Arts uh, a stamp set, which I'll have linked below for you. Um, it's like a cute little camping set and all of these stamps came from the same uh, stamp set. So I'm using that black ink to apply branches so that it gives some extra interest to my nighttime scene. Uh, and it kind of gives the uh, feeling that maybe he's like in a little clearing. Um, there's some trees nearby, not just like up on a hill with nothing around. <laughs> I don't know. I felt like it kind of helped ground the scene a little bit. Um, so the green is obviously supposed to be the grass and then the rest of it is the night sky. I do like to leave a little area you can see where there's that kind of white strip in the um in between the blue and the green i like to leave that at the horizon line just because i feel like it seems to add a little bit more interest and uh, make it seem i don't know i don't necessarily want to say more realistic because obviously this is not a very realistic looking scene but it gives some sort of realistic feel to it <laughs> it adds a little something um, so now I'm using the Distress Oxides to add in some detail with the grass. Um, this is a really cool stamp to be able to use because uh, it just, I don't know, it's subtle, but it's its a really nice addition because just having it green was a little weird, um, but adding just that little bit of interest there and having the grass, just it added a lot, I think. Um, okay, so I did do some second generation stamping there, by the way. That is just where you stamp off. You, so you ink it up first, stamp it off, and then stamp it onto your card background. Um, next, I'm starting to create my uh, light up card. I use the crocodile. I think that's what that thing is called. I think it's a crocodile. Um, you can use it to punch holes in things. So I punched a hole in my little campfire, and now I'm going to glue that down where I want it. Um, I did try to use the crocodile again to cut 
a hole through my background. However, I found that it actually doesn't go in far enough, and so I ended up having to use another tool, um, just gluing down my bear as well, so I have my scene kind of made up and decided where I want it to go. Uh, but yeah, so I did end up using this other tool. I think it's called an eyelet setter. It's like a really old school thing that I've had for a million years, like since I was 18, I think is when I got it. Um, but it's usually meant for adding, um, like setting eyelets on tags and things like that. Uh, so basically it has these different um, attachments that are magnetic and they go in there. You put it on top of this little mat, you pull up the ball on the top and it's kind of like a weighted thing. And then when you let it go, it makes a loud thwack noise and it puts a hole, like basically a hole punch, through whatever you put underneath it. Um, and then if you had an eyelet that you wanted to use, you can just change out the little head there to the smashing head. I don't know what they're called. I have no technical terms for you today. Um, but anyway, you change out the little head and then it, um, it flattens the eyelet. Anyway, now I'm just trimming down my card base and getting it all the size that I want it to be, which is four by five and a quarter. I wanted to be able to map this on a white A2 size card base because I think the white uh, trim around the edge really helps the scene pop, especially when you have vibrant colors like this. Um, for whatever reason, I just really like it like that, but if you don't wanna have a border, don't have a border. Um, okay, so I'm gluing down my tent as well. Um, and just so you know, I did use Spectrum Noir markers to color this. Um, I know I said I cut out the coloring part, but I just figured in case anybody wants to know, it was, oh, well, there's some right there. Spectrum Noir alcohol uh, markers. This is the coloring system marker. And what I'm doing here is just adding some warm grays to underneath the characters and objects to give it a little bit of a shadow um, so that they don't look like they're just like floating on the grass somewhere. It helps ground them and give it a little bit more realistic of a look. So I went in with a BG4 that is a brown gray marker. Uh, and then I went back in with a BG6, which is just a little darker to add a little bit more intense shadow right around the edge. I didn't wanna to go too crazy with this, so I just left it at that, but just a little bit of shadow goes a long way. All right, so now I am gonna start putting the card together. What I do is I get my power pack kit out. So in this power pack kit, you have these little metal things um, with the tab, that one that I have in my hand there, that's the power pack. So it has the, the power, it has a battery, and it has the button that you press to, press to make your card light up. The little triangle sticker that I stuck down first is the light itself. Um, so what you're trying to do is use this copper tape and go from the positive and negative sides of the power pack to the light. So you're forming a trail. Um, I, I think it's a circuit. <laughs> I don't really know anything about all of that, but... I'm gonna go with that, let's go with circuit. Um, so you're using the copper tape to conduct your current um, and get the power from the battery to your light. Basically you're creating a power source, right? You want it to get the power from where your button is all the way to your light so that it actually lights up. So I'm just gluing the power pack down now that I know where I want it to go. Uh, and then I'm going to be using that copper tape to create a pathway for the current to go along. So you start on both the positive and the negative side. So the power pack is clearly marked. It has a plus sign and a minus sign. And then your light also has a plus sign and a minus sign. So from the plus sign, you just start at the battery pack and then create a pathway to the light. It's okay if it's too long. You see how mine goes over. It doesn't matter as long as your pathway is not broken anywhere where it needs to be connected. Uh, so it's totally fine for it to be longer in some areas. Don't try to worry about getting it perfect. And even if your copper tape kind of like bends a little bit, you can smooth it out and it usually is okay. Now I will preface this by saying, I did not give myself enough room here. If you do this, give yourself more room. 
there is no reason that I had to make it this cramped. And then I did run into issues later with my foam tape because it was such a small area. I did not really have enough room to put the foam tape and it did affect my card. So it doesn't work as perfectly as if I had given myself more space. So if there's anything you take away from this video, give yourself more space, don't make it cramped. Um, okay, so you can see me pressing the button over and over and over again to make sure that it lights up and it does. So success, my pathway was correct. Um, now I'm just gonna move on to the rest of my card before I assemble it. So I treated my surface with an anti-static powder tool. I'm using the Spectrum Noir Watermark Ink to stamp out my sentiment and uh, just stamped it twice to make sure that it got nice and juicy. Then I'm gonna use some alabaster embossing powder from Brutus Monroe to uh, pour onto the card here. Uh, now this sentiment, of course, is also from Hero Arts. So all of this uh, scenery here is from Hero Arts. Um, and I'll have everything linked down below because I did end up using, I think, at least two stamp sets. Um, I think the tree is from a different stamp set and the grass possibly as well. Um, all right, so I melted my uh, sentiment with the embossing powder there with my heat tool. And then now I have created a double stacked layer of foam. So you can see um, that I've got it surrounding the battery area and all around the edges, just like you would do if you were making a shaker card, um, only we don't need to see through it. <laughs> so you're just putting your cardstock right on top of it. Now I was just lifting it up to make sure that it was still going to work. Everything looks okay. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere my card front to the uh, backing there. Now I've got my card base. It's an A2 size white card base, like I mentioned earlier. And I'm going to go ahead and adhere that to my card base. Uh, now, if you guys have any questions or anything about how this works, or if you end up getting some and you need a little bit of help, you can always reach out to me, drop me a comment and let me know. Uh, and hopefully I can help walk you through it. I think when you start something new, the first time is always the hardest. And then once you've done it once, you kind of get the hang of it and it feels a little more safe and a little more comfortable. Um, so don't be afraid to try it. And um, I don't know, it's worth it. So I'm using this My Favorite Things interactive labels just to add a little button that says push or a little sticker that says push. I just put it on a piece of post-it tape so it's full sticky post-it tape uh, and then I just cut it into a little arrow. That way it can come off and it won't ruin the card but it'll still stick there as long as I need it to. So I think that's super super cute uh, and that just finished off the card you guys. So I hope you love this and you're if you're interested in finding out more about the power packs check that description down below. Everything will be linked for you. And uh, like I said, a link for the blog as well. So you can check out Parablossom Press and their super cool power packs. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you have an awesome day and I'll see you next time.